Welcome back to the second video on the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the first video, we talked about who was or who is the baptism of the Holy Spirit for. And what we discovered in that 16-minute video is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit was offered to everyone who was baptized in the baptism of John. In Matthew chapter 3, John offered the same crowds he baptized the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is no reason to limit the baptism of the Holy Spirit to the 12 apostles or to the household of Cornelius or to the apostle Paul. Every believer in the first century received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now let's look at the book of Acts chapter 1 to talk about this interesting expression, the promise, connected with another expression, the gift. So let's take a look. In Acts chapter 1, the scripture says in verse 4 that while staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the, notice, the promise of the Father. And what does he say the promise of the Father is? He says, this, that is the promise of the Father, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The promise of the Father in Acts chapter 1 was the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So. We've already read in Acts chapter 2 how they were baptized and how they began to speak in new tongues. After a while, some of the crowds gathered and they said, what is this? In Acts chapter 2 and verse uh, 16, the apostle Peter stands up and he says, these are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. He says, no, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. The pouring out of the Spirit is the baptism of the Spirit. Now, I know sometimes we have a little bit of trouble with the expression poor connected to the expression baptism, right? Because we grew up being taught that baptism is immersion only. And so I might understand how there's a little bit of confusion here with these different terms. But the baptism of the Spirit, pouring out of the Holy Spirit, is the same idea. And so he says, This is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And then he began to say that. In the last days, God declares, I'll pour out my spirit upon, upon who, by the way? Upon all flesh, not just the apostles, not just the household of Cornelius, but the baptism of the Holy Spirit were for all peoples. He says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So not just the men apostles that included the other uh, people in that upper room that were women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary Magdalene, and some of the others that attended to Jesus's resurrection and other uh, disciples as well. He says, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days, I'll pour out my spirit, and then they shall prophesy. Now let's move along in this passage, and coming down all the way to verse 32. Peter is now talking about Jesus, about his death, and about his resurrection. And he says, this Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. Who? All of the 120 that were within that upper room being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father, notice, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this, what this? This is that, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, as prophesied by Joel chapter 2. He poured out this that you see and hear. Now notice this expression, that he received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. That takes us back in our mind to Acts chapter 1 and verse uh, verse 4 and 5, where Jesus talked about what John had said. I baptize you with water, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And this, he says, was the promise of the Father. So Jesus received the promise of the Father, and he poured this promise out upon, to, uh, his, upon his people. In Ephesians 4, the picture there is similar, uh, that Jesus' ascension, he distributes gifts uh, to his people. All right, but we're not going to get into that passage today. Let's keep going, though to the response. So the people are convicted. They say, men and brethren, what shall we do? And then Peter says to them in verse 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive, notice, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise, what promise? It's the promise that Jesus received from the Father, the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 33, it's the promise Jesus talked about in Acts chapter 1. You have received the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise that is the gift of the Holy Spirit is for you, for your children, for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And so he then says, 
with many other arguments, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. That kind of gets back to that idea in Matthew chapter three, right? Where the apostle, I keep saying that, where John the Baptist said that they were going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and, and they needed to prepare themselves for the coming wrath. The ax was already laid to the root of the tree. His fan was in his hand. I mean, that was, it was a thing that was shortly to come to pass. The kingdom of God is at hand, right? And so Jesus says the same thing. Uh, in his ministry, and Peter says the same thing in his. Save yourselves from this crooked, this perverse generation. But our focus is on the Holy Spirit. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is, notice the categories of people here, for you, for your children, for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord God calls to him. Now notice the similarities between that list and the list in Joel chapter 2. He says, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh who you might read as all who are far away, or as many as the Lord God shall call. He says sons and daughters, so you and your children, right? And then old men and young men. So it's kind of the same categories there. The promise is for you, for your children, for all who are far away, as many as the Lord God shall call. That's who the gift of the Holy Spirit is for. It is the promise of the Father. But let's go later in our Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 10, to the household of Cornelius, a story with which I'm sure you're familiar. So Peter goes to the household of Cornelius and talks to him about who Jesus is. At the moment that they believe, notice what happens here. This is in Acts chapter 10, verse 43. Peter says, all the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives the forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking, well, maybe while he was saying those words in particular, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that, notice, the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. Notice the connection with Acts 2 and in a couple different places here. First, he calls it the gift of the Holy Spirit, which brings us back to Acts chapter 2, 38 and 39. But second there, he has that expression, poured out. That should evoke in our memories Joel chapter 2. I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. They're seeing these prophecies being fulfilled in real time. And they were astounded that God had done the same thing for the Gentiles that he had done for them. Go a little bit later in our Bibles to Acts chapter 11. In Acts chapter 11, verse 12, we see that the spirit is who told Peter to go to preach to the household of Cornelius. And then in verse 15, he says, And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning, taking them back again in their minds to Acts chapter 2. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If God gave them the same, notice the same gift, what's the gift? The gift is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father. If God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? Now, one more passage here. And we'll kind of bring all this together and bring it to a close. In Acts chapter 15 in verse 8, we have, again, a recounting of the sermon that Peter gave to the household of Cornelius. And he says in verse 8, And God, who knows the human heart, testified to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. Again, connecting the household of Cornelius event to Acts chapter 2. And in cleansing their hearts by faith, he says, he made no distinction between them and us. In Acts chapter 10, Peter said, if you believe in Jesus, you'll receive the forgiveness of sins. They did believe in Jesus. They did receive the forgiveness of sins. And to prove that to the audience there, they began to speak in tongues as the apostles did in the beginning in Acts chapter 2. And that was a sign, as we're going to see in the next episode, pointing to the reality of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 1 is the promise of the Father. The baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2 is the promise of the Father, and it's called the gift of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 10 is also called the gift of the Holy Spirit, and it connects their experience in Acts 10 with what happened in Acts 2, showing that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Spirit, and the promise of the Father are all the same thing. Let me remind you of what Acts 2, 38 and 39 said. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is unto you and to your children and all those who are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. As many as the Lord our God shall call. Now here's a question that we might end with. What 
is the connection between the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the tongues and miracles and signs that were demonstrated among the first believers in the first century? And that's going to be the question we'll handle in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hope you subscribe. Hope you like. Hope you share this video. And if you sh if you would like, you can support this ministry by going to danielcrogers.substack.com and becoming either a free or a paid subscriber to help out uh, with the things that I do. Thank you and God bless.